Hello and welcome to another series on my channel. Today we're looking at the game Hard West, which is a pure western turn-based squad tactical game with adventurous world exploration. Think of it as uh, maybe XCOM with a little bit of Heroes of Might and Magic at um, a world map. The combat in this game is supposed to be fast, not more than 5 to 10 minutes, but it is bloody decisive and tactically rich. The game has a couple of interesting features that I'd like to share with you and it is much more straightforward and in your face than XCOM. No overwatch and no permanent positioning in high cover. There's a lot of uh, hit and run, many many bad guys. Last but not least, there is this feeling of desperation and demonic uh, nature in, in the Western. So there's a fantasy my uh, mystery element to it. If you enjoy these sorts of games, this is definitely the right one for you. I will promise you I'll make it worth your time. So I picked up this game when I was uh, casually browsing through similar games than XCOM. And whenever you are considering yourself to be a strategy fan, this is probably a good game for you. I will lead through the game. I've probably played about half an hour so far just to get familiar with the mechanics. So we are basically jointly going through this in quote unquote a blind run. The game itself, if you click on the campaign tab, is um, structured in so-called scenarios. Overall, there seem to be um, eight scenarios, each appro uh, approximately maybe one and a half to two hours so the game isn't pretty long but uh, for well 88 cents that's how much i paid for the game uh, you get more than you are paying for way more than you're paying for and believe me it's really really fun so without further ado let's start the scenario and as always so that's the first scenario we're playing at the hardest difficulty painful for veterans of turn-based tactical genre. We're taking combat injuries, uh, which is a fun way of the game of giving you additional negative stats that over time can turn into positive stats. And believe me, baby, I was born to play Iron Man. So here we go, guys. The old West was a hard place. The only thing in abundance was poverty and firearms. Combine alcohol and hopelessness with greed, envy, lust, and pride, and death is often the result. Crude cabins stood alone in the wilderness, cut off from the outside world. People knew to mind their own business, but isolated, they grew ignorant and superstitious. Some said the devil walked the earth, said lost souls haunted and possessed the living, pushing them past the edge of sanity. In this harsh and dangerous country, no one had it easy, including your family. You were six years old when you traveled the Oregon Trail with your mother and father. Food was scarce. And your father, despite being a fine tracker and a crack shot, failed to find any game. It was as if every animal on the trail was spooked by some evil force. Your old man found a small village and tried to trade equipment for food. But this village was overrun by outlaws. They took your mother and decided to trade you and your father to white slavers. But he managed to break free, told you to hide, and set out to save her. So, with that, the scenery is set. Very sinister, grim uh, scenery, which we're going to encounter here. So let's do this. We're going to go with a tutorial because that gives me an opportunity to explain a couple of the comic mechanics to you, um, which is going to be yeah somewhat similar to XCOM but yet different. So the whole 
almost perfect system of XCOM 2 where you do have two turns per round and whenever you are shooting um, the turn end is also in, embedded here. You can see that uh, with the little stars on the left hand side. This basically uh, illustrates the short yellow circuit is how far you can uh, move if you would decide to just move once. The orange um, yellow circuit uh, is the increased double movement. Uh, you will find another familiar concept which is half cover that you can see um, displayed with half shields and full cover that you can see which is displayed with full shields. Um, there is, it is uh, a massive distinction though between uh, XCOM and uh, this game because this game here is not RNG based and that brings me to probably the most important uh, part of the game which is the mechanic of luck and I was skeptical at first but hear me out I think luck is really a clever invention of the game so here's the deal with luck every character yourself every character that you're playing and every enemy is having a luck value on you can start with even more than 100 luck there are ways of getting it up even further so luck determines um, when you are being hit so whenever someone shoots at you instead of uh, rolling for percentage chance their ability to shoot you uh, at you for instance let's say 50 percent is deducted from your luck so us currently having 100 luck means the first person with 50 um, accuracy will shoot at us and deplete 50 luck. So this continues on and on and on until your luck sometime, uh, at some time uh, reaches zero. And at that time you are inevitably going to be hit. Now you get a refresher of luck, so between 60 and 70 whenever that happens and the uh, system continues. So they kind of uh, mix in an element of it, it's, it's going to be just a matter of time until you are being hit. Now there's a however part. Every weapon has three damage types and it's not as complicated as it sounds. Hear me out. There is one uh, damage, usually the maximum weapon damage, against targets that do not have any cover. Okay, so when you're getting hit, you're taking the full grunt of the weapon. Usually that's a lot of damage. And to be fair, our character has seven hit points. Probably some of the weapons could uh, even one-shot him, some of the later rifles. Um, a normal pistol, I think, does five or six points of damage. Um, so us standing in the open and taking a shot to the face would effectively almost kill us. However, if uh, the second damage is for half cover and the third damage uh, value is for full cover. And generally the higher your cover, the lower the damage that you receive. If you're standing in full cover, almost all of the weapons deal only one damage to you. So that means over time, if you're uh, taking a solid cover, you can actually shoot for a very, very long time because your luck keeps refreshing once you're being hit. So that's the overall mechanic. Sounds super complex, but let's jump into it and give it a try, right? So we're moving once into half cover. And there you go. There's um, the mechanic uh, explained again in a probably more precise and, and shorter version. But here's the thing, like we're now in half cover and we can take a shot. And you can see that the, sh uh, that the damage from our weapon would be four because he is currently standing in um, in the open ground. I am not sure if we can actually see the weapon. No, there is no hover over. Yeah, this is our general chance to hit. Here you go. There is a uh, there is a distance malus for him being a bit further uh, um, a bit distant bonus actually uh, for him being in the right range of our weapon and then there is an innate uh, defense of uh, the character. You can see down here at the weapon on the left hand side the optimal range um, of uh, uh, how, how close uh, the character should be. So um, the closer you, uh, you are sometimes the better for weapons that are short range. Uh, sometimes for weapons that are longer range like rifles you need to stand a, f a little bit further away. Uh, we're going to go through that uh, as time progresses for now. Let's continue and we will see 
that the character actually just took a uh, just took a shot and killed him at once. Now a couple of things happened here. Uh, now the system is explaining uh, to us what luck means. We had 100 luck. This guy was taking a shot at us. We um, were not being hit, but 40 luck was depleted. So. If he would continue and shoot two times more, we would actually be hit. Now, instead of taking that, of course, we're going for a flanking maneuver. There we go. Uh, nice and easy. We, again, can see 65 uh, base hit, uh, proximity bonus, a little bit of an outlaw um, defense bonus, and there we go. This character clearly started with less than 68 luck. And uh, as always, reloading is an option. Reloading is is handled as it is handled in XCOM. Oh, and that's another nice concept. Um, I actually like that concept a lot. I haven't mastered it by any means. Now, you don't know where all of the enemies are, but the game gives you a lot of info. In here, for, for instance, you see the shadow of a person so you can be quite paranoid at some stage, make sure that you are not uh, casting your shadow. And there are actually a couple of game abilities that, uh, that use shadow. Um, we're going to see that a bit later. Uh, now, we can shoot through the tent, although uh, we only have a suspicion that someone's there. And lo and behold, this guy is falling down. Now, we're taking another shot. We're now down to 17 luck which isn't particularly great so you must take a better cover and now the game tells us one important aspect it tells us try to run for full cover um, this here is usually half cover but some of the terrain can be modified by clicking at it um, he is now taking full cover and you will see there you go or we've just been hit we took one damage because we're in full cover, but we regained 60 luck. You have several abilities to dispose your luck, and that's important to know as well. Some of the special abilities, and there will be quite a few, will actually uh, cost a bit of luck. This um, fanning is an ability that costs no luck, but it is a weapon-specific ability. It is basically multiple shots uh, with a revolver, but you can see Fanning takes two action units, so uh, it can be only done when uh, standing in cover, uh, when standing still and not moving. Now we're going to do that because that's three shots, and not very surprisingly, all three shots deplete the luck of uh, the enemy, so we've just killed the enemy. We're reloading. And we're ending our turn. Now, moving, of course. She was no Into the house found. reveals a I grim truth. The box. What was in it? The simple wooden box contained a head. Your mother's head. Afterwards, your father found one of the gunmen still alive. The dying man rambled on about some unholy obligation, about promises made by the devil himself, and the rewards they would find in hell. So, Hard West, we just finished the first scenario. Let us go to uh, the world map and take a look on how that would work. So, the tutorial clearly showed us you and your uh, father were alive but all your supplies were destroyed no way you'd make it to oregon now your father decided to stay put and build a life right there many years passed and you grew up you became a man So, the two of you took over the Rune Railroad Company's building and tried your hands at farming. The soil was dry and the land was dangerous. You spent ten long years scratching out an existence from the dirt. Now you were grown. You, uh, you figured the two of you should try for Oregon again. It's what your mother would have wanted. Gold. 
Who would have thought that you would find it here? Just when you needed cash for your journey. Time to strike it rich and get out of town before the outlaws and the madman showed up. They always do. So, it just as explains to us, the masked man controls all the gold mines. His henchmen sold you a license that lets you run nine prospective uh, prospecting operations. So, this is the overland uh, map of, uh, of Hard West. And there are a couple of these uh, mines which we can indeed run through and and get some money. Gold is being displayed here. Um, however, there is a catch to it. Like you can be, you can start to be very, very efficient uh, with uh, with gaining gold if you get the right tools and the right uh, supp uh, supplies at your hand. At the moment, we do have nine mining licenses, um, and we're getting 100% um, of the uh, of the gold. Uh, with any of the mining if you if we look at the gold just I'm not doing it at the moment because we need to think how we're doing it most efficiently if you look at the gold mines you will see that each of the gold mines in this game basically has an upper layer middle layer and a, and a deep layer so placer gold deeper gold and hard rock gold and each of the three layers costs you a different amount of money and has a different chance of yielding you gold usually you are not gaining as much as you would think like if we we're going to do it for uh, for 15 dollars uh, or 15 gold uh, we will not get that much back um, there is an option to uncover the lowest layer with unconventional extraction methods and there are a couple of them which we are going to see a bit later but before we do that and before we uh, go to any um, of these uh, buildings let's visit our neighbors it looked like a nearby farmhouse inhabited you paid a visit and they turned out to be kind people you exchanged pleasantries and uh, customary promises to help one another more importantly you met florence uh, the beautiful kind-hearted daughter all you exchanged were a few glances but you found yourself smitten not interested in prospecting themselves the neighbors tipped you off with a couple of prospecting spots from there we the go. We got four shafts, damp mine, she was all you could uh, think prospectors about. camp, collapsed map, and she inspired in you. here in the prospectors the camp, the uh, we you. can directly uh, we can directly see the advantage of um, of planning ahead. I didn't know that in the first playthrough, and I'm sure, surely not doing it optimally. But um, there are three prospectors camp, at least on the first map. Um, and each of them allows you to invest money to gain master, uh, simple advanced or master techniques for a specific layer. In this case, placer gold. And if we remember uh, to go to the mines, you would see that placer gold was exactly the first one, costing you 50. So, in a sense, if we invest 300 uh, gold once, then we would go. Uh, then we would gain uh, a bonus of 75% for placer uh, for all of the placer gold, and that might be not too bad. Now I'm leaving the three mines here for now, and I'm just exploring the map further. So we find a collapsed uh, collapsed map, uh, collapsed uh, mine. You heard about this place, a rich mine that has been collapsed years ago on top of a bunch of miners burying them alive. Their wives and children still decorate the entrance with flowers. It looks like you could squeeze in, maybe get some gold that they haven't found. Of course, we're doing that. As you reach the first opening, you found a skeleton with its legs crushed under a boulder. You wonder if he bled out before he died of thirst. His shirt, through stained, was still intact and in a very good quality. Yep, we decide to go even deeper. The next cavern was cramped and full of stale air. You found a little gold, but still not much. And boy, oh boy, we're going to press on. Wounded and very, you eventually reach the end of the furthest tunnel, and there inside a massive stash of gold, the air must have been poisoned you. Because uh, as you went to pick it up, 
you hallucinated a tall man in a suit smiling and smoking as you turned to leave he said just a sort of we're clear that's mine but you can borrow it for a while um, i decided i speak the devil with an uh, with a russian accent <clears throat> As you inched your way uh, back to the sunlight, you heard the low rumbling all around. You hurried, hands trembling, heavy drops of sweat rolling down your face. You've just emerged, blinking into the sunlight when the mine collapsed behind you. Now, that was our first encounter with what I think is going to be the devil. I don't know yet, but um, it, it's an interesting character. Um, with a lot of mystery. Like I said, I haven't, uh, I haven't understood the game fully so far. Now let's take a look at the um, inventory because we found a couple of things and <clears throat> I just wanted to show them. First of all, we found a lot of uh, cash. Great. Second of all, we shredded our hand, which means we took minus one max hit point and minus 10 aim. That's, that was uh, the shredded hand. Uh, from the cavern <clears throat> which is a bit of a bummer for us uh, the way that injuries in this game seem to work at least as far as I've found it out so far is that you need to do, uh, need to keep them for a scenario or two and then they uh, for for one scenario and then they disappear or for one battle and then they disappear so they are not permanent um, there, however, there is an option, there is a church in that scenario where you can pay money to get rid of it. It sucks, but 400 gold was worth it. Now, let's take a look what else we got. Each character basically has two weapon slots. And I highly recommend, as far as I've seen it uh, so far, to, ta uh, to take a weapon for close range and one weapon for long range. Let's take a look at uh, the weapon, for instance. Uh, the six shooter um, is, the, is the pistol that, that um, we have used in our first mission. It has a range of short, which means you've seen the range, uh, the, the range uh, description at the bottom. Uh, it works best in relatively close range and you can see under the description like here So if I hover over it again here where the mouse is um, You can see its normal damage is 4 its damage versus half cover is 2 and its damage versus full cover is 1 That's the damage fall off that I was talking about and then there is of course ammunition so there's a last, uh, a last value which is called heat. <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, characters that have more heat seem to be more threatening and therefore will be more often attacked. Now, again, we do have two weapon slots. There are two trinket slots, which mainly are for healing herbs and, uh, and so-called relics. We found the first relic, which is called the pr uh, priceless relic of soothing effect that grants healing. It is unclear uh, where it is coming from, uh, but it is a devilish relic and we're giving it to Warren, our main character. Um, this guy, by the way, looks incredibly old for someone who was just a boy and is now a grown-up. Like his father, almost, uh, they look equally fucked up, but his father, um, looks more like a 40 years old a drunk heart who lives in the trailer park but Warren definitely gets the, the prize for the cocaine uh, for the cocaine addict um, youngster that is supposed to be 20 but looks already like 35 anyways um, we have uh, just received two further uh, two further um, uh, items they both fill the uh, uh, shoe slot and for whatever reason that's the only slot that you can wear so it's kind of your armor so to speak one allows you to gain four movement the other one protects you from crippling injuries which isn't really something that we would want to have um, actually we would want to have crippling injuries but that's a different story i'll explain it when it happens um, now the last concept is the card game um, and again, don't be overwhelmed by it. The card game is actually a very, very nice feature. Now, 
you will or we will all gain cards um, as we play through the whole scenarios and it's kind of a poker cardish game every card has an ability for instance this here is a special ability which allows you to bounce your mm, shot off of certain ricochet objects such as uh, such as pumps metal objects or um, or barrels um, and therefore ignore cover super fun and we're going to take this plus we get a nice little bonus of 5a okay there's a second uh, one which is called shadow solve regenerate when you're not in direct sunlight very powerful in nightmares um, so that's not bad either and you can see we do have a 10 here and we do have a jack here so the trick of the whole card system is once we unlock more and more um, you will see that you can actually get poker hands and poker hands will give you additional bonuses for instance a pair will give you plus four movement so that's a wonderful feature i really liked it when i've discovered it uh, there is actually an incentive to build your character around the abilities but also around the bonus that you are getting uh, plus the cards themselves dictate a little bit how the character plays out the character itself doesn't really have that many skills this here is so to speak your skill set that you're giving to the characters which is fun we're going to take a look at that uh, as it unfolds now we got the father which is uh, who is called father and we got Warren, who is just let's call him cocaine addict uh, with a relic so that's the team so far and that's also the explanation of how the game uh, unfolds um, let's continue a bit until we are at the actual first scenario i told you that we want to go to the prospectors camp we got 400 gold perfect and i'd like to learn the master techniques for placer gold 75 percent so we're paying 300 you've learned how to uh, how to retrieve gold in a slice through and you can see or we it's quite clear here place our gold tunnels will now uh, yield us 1.75 times the gold amount which may, uh, brings us to the damp mines so let's uh, get some placer gold we're investing 15 and we're getting back uh, 35 so we would have gotten back 20 but with a 1.7 multiplier we're getting 35 so you can see the place of gold is now gone we're leaving the mines and we're taking the next mines we got 61 income totaled uh, to uh, to 64 and last but not least We got ourselves 54 so we are back to 200 gold which is more than enough for the beginning let's explore a bit more i'm not even sure if there are secrets in here that you could just explore once you are moving there but the length uh, but over uh, over time um, this will populate more and more all right tranquil meadows um, you notice a young native woman with a basket picking flowers and carefully selecting herbs initially uh, startled by your arrival she then offered you healing herbs for sale so we can take 35 dollars healing herbs um, and we decide to seek out the healing plants ourselves instead observant and lucky you picked the correct herbs and we got ourselves three Plus, Warren uh, lost 30 uh, luck. That's fine. We just saved some more gold. All right, so I don't want to harvest the mines too intensively yet. I want to save them for later. So we found the church, which, um, by the way, here we could get the healing for the hand. Uh, or we can get a prayer 
uh, but we won't do either of that because I do have uh, the last time I've did that uh, we unfortunately lost the father because he kind of uh, redeemed and was unhappy with his life and decided to go which was a bit of a bummer um, so the next uh, the last time uh, the last time uh, that I played it well, I actually started to mine uh, to mine a bit more and I think that's exactly what we're uh, what the intention of the game is so let's excavate a bit deeper you collect a deeper gold deposit rinsing the rocks and you uh, that you excavate with your shovel we got ourselves 48 but the prospecting costs were 40 so we just got eight gold what am i missing i know the last time the greedy mexicans already uh, started to rise somehow this doesn't happen this time let's go for another uh, excavation everyone said uh, there was placer gold down the ditch so let's try to mine it prospecting gold 100 you gain 146 income totaled to 46 there we go inevitably news about the gold spread overnight several nearby homesteads and settlements were raided father worried you wouldn't make it on your own he figured you need some help you disagreed but went along with his decision for a last time now i know that there was the option to gain some help we could barter and actually get a gun but we wouldn't need that at the moment we could go to the fate trader which is the uh, the guy that is selling trinkets and there are a couple of great ones for instance uh, the uh, the relic which allows you to to heal multiple people um, yeah but we don't need anything repeater rifle maybe no actually not So let's look at the Mexican crime lord. Cr crime lord. The Mexican said uh, he'd help you, but you uh, split your money with him. He left a bunch of guns, some empty blessings, and a promise to send Vaquero to help out. So we just got ourselves Vaquero. Um, and that will be a very costly um, endeavor because the crime lord as any good crime lord is maybe going to uh, betray us so here's our next scenario that we're going to play through and i think that's a good moment uh, for a cliffhanger we need to defend our hometown so see you in the next video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave your comment uh, comment down below i'd like to hear your opinion about Western games.